Hey guys, good morning. What is going on out there today? Brent Abel here, webtennis.com. Another star to a spectacular day here in the desert. I don't know, what's the forecast today? What are we looking at? This could be kind of a nice day. 80. Uh, what'd you say? 80, you're right. 80. All right, a little workout with you this morning around 9.15 and then... The Ms. Uh, the Ms. Abel, my Ichikawa Dash Abel, and I have a little mixed at twelve thirty. Correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So, guys, what I've got for you today is a drill that um, I did yesterday with the Big O, and it was kind of spur of the moment, but it actually turned out to be something uh, really beneficial. And I want to I want to uh, tell you what we did and and what the benefits. Um, I felt that we got from it yesterday. Um, I've got the court diagram up there, which I'm going to go through this drill. It's real simple, pretty easy. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. Um, and I think that you're going to find that um, some really good stuff comes out of it for you. Before we get into it, a uh, couple of things. Number one, uh, I've got some free courses for you over at webtennis.com. Uh, there are three courses over there. One in particular is the Top Spin Second Serve. If you're struggling with too many double faults or maybe you're getting that second serve in singles and or doubles, but it's just sitting up, letting that returner just unload and take charge of the point, then I want to help you develop some more natural swing speed so that you get the power you need and the correct spin so that you get a nice high bounce out of that surface box over there. At worst case, you start the point off neutral um, where you're hardly ever maybe once a match double faulting. Uh, but but the really great stuff is that is that you get a nice high bounce and you get some you get some errors and all the good stuff. Anyway, just go over to webtennis.com, drop in a first name and email address, and you will uh, get access to uh, to that course. What else have I got for you? Look, if you're really into really into becoming a better player uh, and just not sitting on the sidelines, but really thinking about better technique, which in my my teaching mindset is let's see what we can eliminate. Let's see how minimalist we can go with techniques so that you become a really consistent shot maker. Number two, tactics and strategy. Number three, if you're into the mental part of the game, which we all need to be, right? And then number four, physical. Uh, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell over there at YouTube so that uh, you get notified anytime I upload new videos, recorded videos, pre recorded, or like this, a live. And then, um, look, uh, if you're into drills, right, let me know by hitting the like, the like and the share wherever you are over at Facebook and in uh, uh, and YouTube so I know to make more videos like we're going to do today. And then finally, one other thing. Look, if you're a teaching pro or coach um, and the pandemic has taken a little bite out of the income, uh, I started an income, uh, income project last year that you might uh, have some interest in. Uh, if you want to know more, if you want the details, just shoot me an email, brent at webtennis.com. And more than happy to actually share just a short little three-minute video with you that uh, kind of explains what I'm doing and might be something that, that could work for you as well. Guys, let's get into today's drill. Let me put up uh, the screen like this. And let me go to the, so um, here we are. So yesterday, Owen and I um, doing our normal warm up. He had a little knee tweak from a couple of days ago. And, um, you know, what we do is we normally do the warm up and then we play some points. One guy serves for you know, 12, 15 minutes and then we switch. The other guy serves for 12 or 15 minutes playing points. We don't keep score, uh, but we do, you know, we play from, you know, Deuce, add, deuce, add. We just keep rotating back and forth. Both of us really like the drill because um, for a whole host of reasons, you know, rather than rather than keeping score. And look, there's there's, uh, you know, 101 different ways to do that kind of drill. But that's typically what we do. But yesterday he said, look, can we do this where we just play the ball right back down the middle so that he didn't have to move so much from side to side and cover so much court with that with that, with that knee issue. And I said, sure. So look, here's what we did. Um, I started serving uh, S for server, R for returner. And you know what? I, I just served directly 
try to serve directly at them as much as possible. Not 100% of the time. Sometimes I'd go down the tee and sometimes I'd go out wide. But the drill for me was I want to be playing my serve. And then when he was returning, he was returning right back down the middle, right? And then from there on, the point got started where every shot had to be played directly right down the middle. Now, look, there were some balls that didn't go directly right down the middle, maybe a little bit out here, a little bit out there. But the whole goal was to play every ball right back uh, down the middle. And if you think about this, there's there's um, a couple of things that actually happen is um, hold on. Let me get get back here with you um, is that number one is that Jeff Jacklitz and I have talked about this a lot where, um, and he came up with a phrase, you know, you got to let your opponent touch the ball. You can't be afraid of thinking that uh, if my opponent touches the ball, well, then that's a bad thing, right? You've got to allow your opponent to participate in you winning points and you winning games and sets and matches and lo and behold, maybe tournaments uh, as well. And so this drill and I just got this sense yesterday as we we're going through it is that I started to really settle down and, and not feel this. And I don't play with too much anxiety out there, but I just sort of felt that, that there is sometimes when I'm playing standard points where my brain goes into, well, what corner do we want to go to? And, and too often that has this little voice that says, Hey man, you know what? You might be able to win the point outright by going to that corner. He might not get there. And I think too often what happens is we we overcook the shot just to kind of make sure that opponent might not get there. And you know as well as I do what that what that creates is sort of an unforced error, right? We forced ourselves into giving away the, the point. So look, with this drill, serve the body and then return to the body and then play every other shot right back down the middle. What you're going to settle into is this sense of, uh, I think the title of this is, is swing freedom, right? Where for me, I was just feeling like, you know what? I can take all day long to finish the swing. I don't have to abbreviate the finish. I don't have to get ready super early. Um, and even if I played a short ball and, and no one approached on it, I knew he was approaching right down the middle. I knew I could take time with the next shot right at him. Um, and so a couple of good things happen is you more often than not, you allow the ball to get into your unique, ideal honeypot. What is that point of contact that for you on your forehand, on your backhand, uh, on your approach shots, on your volleys, on your overheads, on your drop shot? Allow the ball, wait, W-A-I-T, allow the ball to get into your unique uh, point of contact. And yours is probably different than mine, maybe, you know, an inch or two. I don't know. Who knows? doesn't matter. You got to figure that out for yourself. And this drill will help you start to get organized. Once you start to play real points, right, where the whole court's open, is you start to get the sense that it's okay to allow the ball to get into the honeypot, right? To where you just are on balance. You've got a really solid base, a solid foundation to hit to hit from. And, and so that was the sense I had yesterday. And for me, uh, I think I probably told you guys this before. When I'm playing my best in tournaments, um, I'm not concerned with playing my shot and then looking up prematurely, right? What do we call it? You know, we call it peaking, right? P-E-E-K-I-N-G, where we take a sneak peek out in the landscape. And lots of times what happens is we do it just prior to making contact. And it kind of sw it kind of throws that, that, that swing path, the alignment, uh, I should say that swing path out of alignment. And you know the feeling, right, of, of looking up. And it could be a grounding. Uh, it could be looking too early on the serve, right? Could be the volley, the approach, the overhead, whatever. So this drill for me yesterday um, really helped me sort of artificially keep my head down, keep my eyes down through contact. And here's the thing is the result that I got from whatever my shot intention was, I felt it rather than having to actually get confirmation by visually seeing it. And for me, that just works the best. And when I'm doing that in tournaments, I'm telling you, that's when I that's when I play my best tennis. Um, 
The other thing is that you can do with this drill is you can really settle into, since you know that your opponent's going to get to the ball because you're playing it right at him or her, or, or, or her, is that you can start counting, right? You can start counting to one, two, three. Serve, one. The return comes back. Your next forehand or backhand, right, is two, right? Your next shot is three. And you start counting. And what I was doing is I was counting – I was counting the number right at the moment that I made contact. So on my serve, one right on top. My return, at the very moment that I made contact with the return, I counted one, right? And so that kind of goes back to the old, you know, bounce hit thing. Um, so, and, and Owen just said this drill allowed to get 20, 30, 30 more balls in the court. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, that is really a big deal. And, and I think the more that... Um, that and I'm talking to you, O, is the more that you the more we do this drill, the more you'll get that sense that you can win points without having to ding an outright winner to the corner. And and once you get that feeling, and I'm talking to all you guys, once you get that sense that you that Jeff Jacklin says it's okay to allow them to touch the tennis ball, that once you get that feeling, things just change. Just change. You just kind of settle down and you're okay to stay in the point. And even if your intention is to go to that corner, you're still assuming that that opponent's going to either get to it or they're anticipating that's where you're going with your shot. And that's okay. And in other words of Dick Johnson, right? We'll just take it from there. Big whoop. So this drill will help you feel that sense of, hey, it's okay to stay in the point. Um, and look, there are going to be times when you get the fat, wide open court sitter, hit it, hit it over there. Right. Um, now the other thing about this drill, since we're playing balls right up the middle, you can play droppers. You can play droppers right up the middle. And, and that helps with the disguise of whatever shot you're playing, right? If you played a couple of slice backhands right back up the middle and you get a third one and it, now why not make it look like a third slice deep backhands coming? Play the dropper, but play it right over the center strap, right? So there you have it. There you have it. Get out there. This could help your singles. Um, I think it'll help your doubles as well. But start off with this uh, as a singles drill, and I'd love to hear back from you kind of what your feedback um, is and, and maybe a question or two. So, guys, that's it for me today. Can't wait getting out there this morning. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a beautiful day out here in the desert. Guys, hope you're having a great day so far, wherever you are. Um, but it's time to now get out there, help someone else have a spectacular day. Guys, let's do this again tomorrow.